And welcome to another edition of East LA Sports Scene as we bring our cameras back into the Boyle Heights Technology Youth Force Center right here on 4th and Glass in the heart of Boyle Heights and very close to Roosevelt High School and a little further east, we will then find uh, our guests for this edition because we're speaking about high school football and we bring our spotlight on to the Garfield Bulldogs and we have a lot to tell but in just a short time so we will have to get to the highlights of last year's season and who else, none, none better than bringing it all into play and all to clarify for us is the head coach himself, Lorenzo Hernandez. Coach, good to see you here in the studio. Thank you. Thank you for having us, Rico. Appreciate it. Coach, uh, wow. Most folks would just say, how do we begin to describe 2018 for the Garfield Bulldogs? Because you want more, but we have to go back and recap 2018. In your words, Coach, and uh, your perspective, the success that Garfield had last year. Well, you know, it, it takes a lot to build the culture that we had our program, and obviously the kids are the number one thing. You know, they got to be able to believe in what we're selling, and for the most part, last year they did that tremendously. Uh, but I got to give credit where credit's due. We have an amazing staff that mm -hmm. you know has been with us for such a long time, and they just really, really are the forefront of what we do at our program, along with our kids. And you can't. You know, mm -hmm. also deny the administration at Garfield High School. We got an unbelievable amount of teachers and staff and, you know, admin, you know, that just continue to support us. Mm -hmm. And we look at it from a perspective of us as, as the broadcasters of the games and knowing the programs for so many years, we see a tremendous balance, a tremendous model that other schools maybe need to take a closer look at it because the, the symbiotic relationship of all of those elements, staff, team, of course, uh, student body, community, alumni, they all click on the same level. Yeah, thank you. We really appreciate the comment. But, you know, it's just diligent work. And again, you got to give credit where credit's due with these kids. And they just do a tremendous job for us. But like we said, we don't have a magic pill. We just go out there and work mm -hmm. every day. And they really are believers in, in what we're selling. And one of the biggest things that we like to sell to these kids is our weight room. Yes. You know, no one shies away from it. And they understand that's what's going to give them success down the road in, in a football game. And 2018 began uh, back, would you say, May and June of last year to prepare the uh, new players and all the veteran players that were coming back uh, for last season, which was, and I'm not going to spend too much time on it but because it's, it's, it's important that we talk about 2019, but 2018, that was the first step you had to get everybody together. Yeah, and, and it truly was. Um, you know, we, we start our weight room in January, and they just go on for about six to seven months through multiple phases and, mm -hmm. and understanding where they need to be. So for the most part, they all those kids did a tremendous job, you know, and I don't think anyone expected what we had. I think the kids themselves probably didn't expect that we struggled early on in passing leagues and mm -hmm. they were just able to move through through the schedule and do a great job taking one game at a time and, and coach uh, the schedule came out and then you guys were ready to roll uh, non-conference and get another um, uh, uh, item you take very seriously before you get into league play talk a little bit about how that went yeah, you know, we had we had great work, you know, that we had to prepare for it in, in regards to, you know, certain schools, but we had two of the local Sure and Montebello schools mm -hmm. out of the city of Montebello. I think they were definitely worthy opponents. I just think our kids came out with a lot of energy, a lot of passion, knowing what had happened the previous year in mm -hmm. twenty, you know, seventeen and, and getting embarrassed. So I mean we, we really wanted to, you know, come back and show them that, you know what, uh, that was last year, this is a totally new year and I mm -hmm. think all the kids had that attitude. Uh, so we did that and of course at home we had the big game as well versus mm -hmm. Crenshaw which mm -hmm. you know was, was was a power for many years and yeah they could have been a little down but our kids you know played up yeah. to the expectations and, and they did a tremendous job for us in that preseason. Okay and then it was the Eastern League and then of course uh, it was into the Classic and uh, I'd, I'd be um, uh, neglecting my my uh, opportunity here to ask you uh, about the classic. I know it's always a it's a league game, of course, but it's, it's as they say, it's more than that. And your perspective on last year's classic. Oh, you know, it's a very emotional game, and uh, I tell the kids we, the biggest thing is being able to keep our emotions in check and do what we do. It's kind of hard to sell the kids on the fact that it's just another game, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it's truly not. It's something for the fans and the community, uh, but we look at it as a, as a as an opponent where it's – it's, it's, it's another game, but it's bigger than that because at the end of the day, it still ha counts as a league win or loss for us. So mm -hmm. uh, we, don't, we don't necessarily have that circled on our schedule, but yeah. it's definitely a game that we know we have to prepare for like we prepare for every other game. And, of course, the notoriety it brings across the country. People want to look at the game. 
And we're seeing now that there's more viewers, as we look at our website, more people are seeing what East, L East LA Classic is all about. And you're going to continue to keep that same tradition going. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I, I think Coach Baral does a great job over there now. And, and I think with a little bit of a stability in that program, I think they're going to definitely turn the corner. I think they got a good system that they've implemented and they're mm -hmm. going to stick with that. And uh, I'm sure this game is going to be tremendous this year. And Coach, I'm sure you've seen um, some of the, the uh, stats that came out already. We've picked this up from uh, Max Preps. And it's astounding here, the football season records that the Bulldogs um, were, were in command of and set records for by categories. My goodness, offense, they're six. And on defense, three, special teams, two, and scoring, four. And, Coach, I know they may look like categories and numbers to you, but you had players in each of those positions that were outstanding. Yeah. Talk yeah. a little bit about those that, that you can – Bring to mind very quickly. Yeah, well, we had we had last year we had some amazing kids like Angel Hidalgo that was just all over the field. Again, PJ going both ways. Uh, we had some outstanding linemen that are returning for us, and some that are not. But just I think we were able to solidify all those little things because everybody took care of their specific position mm -hmm. and what they did throughout the year. So uh, when they understood what we were selling to them and they bought it, it was great. It was really great to just see it unfold. And um, there are some returners that were part of this uh, record-breaking season that are coming back. Can you mention those? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we got obviously our quarterback returning back, and, you know, he did a phenomenal job for us down the stretch after, you know, starting after the Crenshaw game. And then we have PJ, of course, Ruba, our whole D-line with, mm -hmm. you know, Anaya and, you know, a couple other guys that we had out there. They just did a, a, an amazing job for us all year long, and they're, they're only going to get better this year. Okay. And on that note there, Coach, we're going to come back after a quick break here and we're going to look at 2019, and then we'll start uh, our player interview. So you're watching East LA Sports Teams High School Football Preview 2019. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Okay, we're back, and we're speaking with head coach Lorenzo Hernandez, head coach at the Garfield Bulldogs, and they are getting ready for 2019. And, Coach, we're going to talk about preparation for that, and then you're going to tell us the five players that you brought here for our viewers to get to know up close and personal. So let's talk about 19, 2019. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, again, uh, our weight room program has, has been in effect since January. And uh, for the most part, the kids have been doing an amazing job. Uh, they've been out on that field uh, day in and day out like most teams and uh, just continue to work and diligently get better. And uh, that, so the, the first step, again, going to the weight room, um, it's there. They have to maintain their presence in the weight room. Yep, absolutely. Okay. And uh, that's one of our biggest key uh, deals when we talk longevity and we talk scheduling that's number one I, I think that really and everyone that asked me I think that paid dividends to us against mm -hmm. Eagle Rock down the stretch yes. you know we were down at one point and once we got the momentum and our physicality was able to be imposed on on Eagle Rock was because of the weight room and I think mm -hmm. our stamina as well so we're really excited and, and that's what we try to make our kids believe in that you're going to be in a situation where you're not going to be able to sustain it but once you realize you're the stronger team down the stretch that's mm -hmm. what's going to get it done for us. And then, of course, mix in, of course, your um, uh, preseason workouts. Uh, pads are now uh, available for the players to practice in. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. We're, we're full in shells. Contact, basically. Correct. Okay. Yeah, and we'll be going full contact a week from now. Okay. Uh, Coach, uh, let's take a peek at that schedule because, again, your first four games, we won't see you. At, at Garfield, will we? You're going to be basically uh, three out on the road, and then one, I believe, is is, is going to be at Montebello? Yeah, neutral yeah, site? yeah. We're, we're going to be on the road for the most part this year. I believe if we count home games, we probably have three. <laughs> okay. And I see um, uh, Montebello again, series back and back and back to back, correct, with them? Correct. Okay. Yeah. And Sarah, number two, huge. Yeah. Yeah, that's huge. You know, we always want to test our kids to make sure that they understand where we want them to be and just. Being it in such an environment and being against such a high-caliber team, I, I I hope that we're able to prepare for playoffs. Maybe a semifinal type opponent or a final type opponent, mm -hmm. match them up similar to a Narbon or okay. you know a Birmingham or San Fernando or Dorsey, something along those lines. That's what we try to mimic. And then say in the talks with the head coach over there, Co Coach Altenberg, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that dialogue is pretty open. Hey, we'd we'd like to come or like to play Garfield. Is there reciprocity that? this is a good thing for both programs. Yeah, absolutely, you know, uh, and that's what I told him that, you know, our whole goal is to just get our kids prepared for, you know, 
some type of play down the road in a playoff situation, semifinal at the open division. And he understands that and he took it on. And I think it's good for him for an actual zero game for him oh, as they okay. don't have a, 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 a okay. true zero. So we'll have a game under our belt. Mm -hmm. They will be their first opponent. But okay. uh, very great dialogue with uh, Coach Edinburgh over there. He just does a tremendous job producing yes. athletes and more so scholar athletes and getting kids into the NFL. So yeah. be a great environment for our kids. Wonderful. Good to hear that. El Rancho. You know, our Rancho is an interesting opponent. Okay. You know, they wanted to play at a neutral site because they had the same issue as us. We weren't uh, able to, to host a home game. They wanted mm. a home game. So he felt that uh, okay. that it would be best if we play at a neutral site. So he says, okay, let's go ahead and uh, head on over to Montebello and uh, we'll, okay. play, we'll play that game there. Nice. Nice. Okay. And then um, finishing with Crenshaw at Crenshaw again. Correct. Yeah, we'll okay. be going to Crenshaw and, and, and again, just testing what we should be, you know, facing sometime down the road in a semifinal second round playoff game. Okay. Then, of course, we, we know that the Eastern schedule will be there. We did talk about the Classic already. So, Coach, uh, at this point in time, uh, we're going to meet. Five of your players. Um, you mind telling us who who you brought along today? Sir, absolutely. We went uh, P.J. Garcia, okay. our quarterback Jonathan Bautista, okay. our defensive end uh, Anthony Rubacalba, our uh, defensive tackle Eric Anaya, and our kicker Fabian Munoz Rodriguez. Okay. Well, we're gonna get to each and every one of those players, Coach, and then we're gonna have you of course be on the wing here with the player and then at the end we'll come back and we'll go over your personal profile as well Great. okay so that will do it for this moment here on our segment with head coach lorenzo hernandez we're going to uh, reset our set for a moment here and you come right back with more of our program on high school football preview today's guests the garfield bulldogs we'll be right back Here we go now with our first player from the Garfield Bulldogs who had a tremendous year of 2018, but you know what? Knowing him, he's not going to let that be his standard. He's going to do even more, and we're now speaking with P.J. Garcia. P.J., how are you doing? How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well, yeah. doing well. And, of course, two P.J.'s left is head coach Lorenzo Hernandez, and as we are doing now with our uh, format here, I will uh, chime in or ask Coach Hernandez for a couple of perspectives on his players, and then we'll come back to uh, the player and continue on with uh, his journey as a Garfield Bulldog. He's going to be a senior, correct? Yes, sir. And PJ, let's talk about 2018. What a season it was, not only for the, you as a player, the school, the community, heads were turning, uh, all of the, uh, as they say, the, the scouts and the writers were saying, where's Gar? How did Garfield get here? But mm -hmm. you guys have your own secret. And it's very, very well kept. But let's talk about you personally and the Garfield Bulldogs for 2018. Well, we just put in work the whole summer, you know. Without without the weight room that we have, we're always in the weight room. That's why we're mostly stronger than most teams. But mm -hmm. even though we're not bigger, the weight room counts. And the weight room, of course, is uh, Coach Hernandez is one of his most favored uh, off season. Yes. Uh, and during the season as well. But you have to be in that in that weight room. But uh, 2018, you were doing a lot of lifting. Are you at the same level this year or do you feel yourself getting stronger? I feel I feel myself getting way stronger this year. Uh, maybe it's the aging, but yeah, I feel way stronger this year. Okay. Talk about some of the moments in uh, 2018. Uh, you, um, from our coverage, you just were electrifying the whole team. Just really, we, we sit here and talk at about an hour's length of all the standout plays and players we saw from last year and of course leading the team in rushing and going to the hey, state. Speaking with PJ Garcia and boy, what a season he had and we were talking about some of the magic moments the big moments of 2018 pj you played a big part in them but the eagle rock game for some reason you say that is one of the main games and then going to the state final with mcclimans talk about those two games individually i feel like we in the eagle rock game we showed that you know we could put in, put up a fight everybody thought we we're gonna just lose we we're down mm -hmm. in halftime came back and we just won the game like that Okay, and it was a, a game that we called here for the National Federation of High School Sports, and a lot of people saw that game. It was one of the most highest rated that we produced all season, but you were a big part of that. Um, then, not too much later, uh, there's the regional with the Kennedy, and then off to the final in McClymans. Talk about, if you can, both of those. The Kennedy game was a big game at home, you know. We, all, all the fans came out to support that game. It was a great experience, too. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we won, I think, like 42-0 that game. Mm -hmm. So Big game. Yeah, yes, we said we could play that. And then, boom, next, you're going up to the state final. 
Oh yeah, when we traveled up to Oakland, that was a cool experience, you know, with all my teammates and everything. We had fun. Mm -hmm. It was just a, a great experience to go up there, even though we didn't come back with the win. Okay, let's turn it over to uh, Coach, your your head coach, uh, Coach Hernandez, and Coach. Um, the qualities as a student athlete of this young man here and how you've managed to coach him as in his career as, at Garfield. Speak a little bit about that. You know, it's, it's been pretty easy for the most part. PJ's, uh, one of the things about him, he doesn't speak very much, okay. uh, but he's a very humble individual. Uh, Mom really, really strives to make sure that he's walking the line and doing a great job. And all we got to do is just kind of foster that environment a little bit for mm -hmm. him. And he just does a tremendous job for us. And he's very appreciative, very humble, would you say? Absolutely. He's one of the most humble guys that we've had come through here at that position and uh, always willing to share the role. Never, never asks, when am I going to get my touches? And you're used to, to most kids doing that. Mm -hmm. PJ is not like that. He's going to do whatever it takes for the team to be successful. And coach, you, you found a gem and a jewel here and because of the size of PJ. It's just astounding when you see him out there competing at that level. When there's guys six feet, six three, six four in the secondary, the linebacker is really looking to put a hit on him. But he is very durable. Yeah, he's very durable, and he has he has just an unbelievable amount of vision. And I think you attribute that to his his experience at the youth level. He's played youth football his entire life, and uh, he, he just makes things look very easy mm -hmm. uh, when they're when they're extremely cool. difficult for some people. But it just tells you the amount of work and effort that he has put in over the years to get to where he's at now. Okay, I want to come back to PJ because this is an opportunity for me to really uh, give him the platform to thank a lot of his teammates and I know he does both ways he goes both ways but primarily he's going to be on offense but uh, PJ your lineman your O-line I know you want to give them some props so yeah, of course we can do that right now okay uh, to my own line last year you know without them none of this would be possible I wouldn't be first team all league first team all city nothing would be possible without them okay and then yeah. on defense you were able to get in there as well Oh yeah, with the with the big boys up front, that's where everything happens. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to your profile here, uh, PJ, and um, let's see here, senior, that's, of course. Oh, see, I'm mind. sorry, I, I, I make sure I get it right here. There you are, and the PJ, of course, uh, P P stands for Peter, and then J is your initial. But uh, running back and linebacker. So we mentioned that on defense, that's mm -hmm. a great feat physical feat of being a, a linebacker at your size. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, favorite class? I say math, mathematics. That's my favorite subject. Okay. You like to analyze things yeah. and break them down? Okay. Uh, biggest highlight of your playing career at Garfield? Mm, I would have to say the game against Sure when I rushed for 300 yards. And uh, that was last season? Last correct? season, yeah. Yes. So we saw that game. It was um, on East LA Sports Scene. And wow. We just kept saying, how many yards will he end up with? Because he was just on, you were just on fire. Um, and let's see, academic or athletic awards received? Uh, this last year I received first team all city and first team all league. Okay. And we speak, uh, say league, we mean, of course, Eastern yes. League. Eastern all right. League. And the persons who have had the biggest uh, impact on your life thus I far? I have to say my mom. You know, she's always been there since I was young. Every baseball game, every football game, okay. every practice, she's been there. Wow. And of course, making as many games as she can. Yeah, every, every game. Okay. She's there every game. All right. Uh, might your mom have uh, played sports herself? Uh, yeah, she plays softball. We play softball on Fridays. Ah, yeah, so okay. That's cool. So it's a family affair then. Yeah. Okay. And your your mom is uh, Cynthia. Cynthia. Right? Okay. Uh, educational and career goals. Uh, I would like to go to college. You know, play football and hopefully do like a nursing program right there. Okay. If they have it. Okay. That's very very um, yeah. um, big of you to want to go into nursing where you're helping others, yeah. you know, perhaps saving their lives. Um, and maybe small college, or even junior college or division two, possibly? Yeah, any division three. Hopefully get a scholarship somewhere. Okay. Anywhere it doesn't really matter. Okay. Because you still love the yeah, game? Yeah, still love the okay. game. Okay. All right. Um, now let's go to your favorites. Your favorite college uh, football teams uh, or pro teams? My pro team is the Cowboys. Ah. Cowboys, Cowboy fan. Will, will they rebound this year? Hopefully, I, I have confidence <laughs> in them. Okay, uh, any anybody in college you like? Uh, uh, I'm a SC fan, okay. USC. All right, and favorite players? Uh, Ezekiel Elliott. Okay. That's with me. All right, uh, favorite movies or movie? The Longest Yard. Ah, and the type of music you like to relax to? So I listen to Spanish music most okay. of the time. Pre-game music, anything different there? Pre-game. No, probably the same thing. Okay, yeah. all right. And uh, favorite artists or um, actors? Uh, I like Tupac and Easy. Those, those are probably some of my pregames too. Okay, 
All right. Um, PJ, I, I know we've been talking here, and uh, like, like Coach says, he, sometimes you're on the shy side, but I give every player, and I will give Coach the same opportunity to look into the camera and to know that the people, you may not see them here in the studio, but they're there, they're going to watch. Any, any message you want to give to your teammates, uh, classmates, family members, good friends that still follow you? Well, I just hope everybody comes out this season, you know, to support the Garfield football team. And hopefully we get that with Tim Pete. Tempe this year. Hopefully. Okay. All right. Uh, there you have it for this first segment with our players, and we're going to come back after we break here just for a moment, and we're, we're going to come back with more players on East LA Sports Scene as we feature on our first year ever of doing our debut year of profiling the high schools here in East Los Angeles, and we speak of Roosevelt Garfield, looking at Torres, looking at Mendez, and, and possibly Wilson High School to give at least a preview of their uh, schedules, of course, and their seasons coming up. So it's just around the corner. Kickoff will be, I think, in a couple of weeks, but we're going to learn more uh, as we continue on through our interviews today. So don't go away. You're watching East LA Sports Scene. Okay, and coming back with our player interviews, uh, player number two is Jonathan Bautista. No need to really introduce him to the Garfield um, sector of our city here in the LA City School section. But beyond Garfield, you're looking at a top potential quarterback heading his way to hopefully a Division I school. But we're going to meet him now up close and personal, and it's Jonathan Bautista, also a.k.a. Boomer. Yes, sir. Jonathan, how are you? Good to see I'm you. Good. Nice to do. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thanks for coming, and also thanks uh, to Coach Hernandez for uh, replying to our request to do this novel idea of previewing rather than trying to catch up to the teams midway through the season and breaking, of course, uh, some of the rhythm. But we feel this is a good opportunity for the folks to, to really meet you that, that may not know you. Yes, sir. But, uh, Jonathan, talk about the success that you had at quarterback last year leading the Bulldogs. Um, it was a tremendous season yeah. and um, all the way to the state final. But I give you your opportunity to, to kind of recap 2018, oh, how, man. how it all came together for you. It was a blessing um, just to be uh, part of this team last season. Um, you know, it wouldn't be possible without the line that I had and the receivers, you know, Angel helping me out on the outside, my left tackle, everything, you know. It, was, mm -hmm. it wasn't just me. It was a whole team effort to yeah. get to the state final. And, of course, it was a long season, much longer than anyone had uh, thought in last year's preseason analysis of the Eastern League and, of course, the top teams in the city section. But lo and behold, playoffs came. Yes, sir. Wow. And you kept that momentum after the classic and didn't let that bother you. Just kept moving forward. Yes, sir. And um, let's talk about that run because we saw a lot of exciting games from the Bulldogs. Yes, sir. Uh, well, for classic, we, you know, that game was just another game to us for because we, we know we had bigger plans in that game. Mm -hmm. uh, so we just came out and played like we played every other game and set our mind to we got to get to the championship this season. So we just did everything we could in the weight room, off season. We started. Probably we started in January lifting. You know, mm -hmm. that's where we had a big factor, out lifting teams, out powering them. We were able to last longer into the fourth quarter. While they were drained, we were still going at it, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, let's then get into this. Well, oh, before we get into the playoffs, I want to make sure that the 10-0 the, the and 0 record was yes, undefeated sir. up until that particular time. And, um, wow, Bulldogs were on a run. Yes, sir. And on a big roll. Talk about the every day coming back out to practice, knowing that someone – there was a sniper out there, someone waiting, <laughs> waiting in, 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 in the woods to, to try and derail the Bulldogs. But yeah. you guys were very mentally prepared, disciplined. Yes, sir. Well, to be honest, oh, I really didn't care about the record. I just cared about the fact that we had to get to the championship. You know, I know we had to get that done. Uh, in my mind, I was just thinking how I could make this team better, mm -hmm. do what I had to do, okay. get the job done, you know? Okay. Let me ask uh, your coach here, uh, Coach uh, Hernandez. Um, same type of a question about uh, this young man here and what he's going to do, what he has done, what he will do this year, and then your future vision for Jonathan after he graduates. Yeah, like, you know, I stated earlier, I think he was thrown into the fire. He had to, you know, endure a lot of pressure, you know, and it's not easy for a sophomore kid to step in those shoes and, you know, ask him to lead a team the way he did. Uh, I think along the way he grew uh, mentally as well as physically, and I think now he kind of started to hinder a little bit more on what is it that he needs, you know. He started to harness that that true, you know what, this is what needs to get done. This is his first go-around 
at the varsity level, mm -hmm. starting from beginning and hopefully all the way to end. So uh, again, it was very impressive to watch him after coming in for that Crenshaw game. And he was the only kid that wanted to dress up for that varsity game. Mm -hmm. Everything just kind of aligned, you know. He had no business in there because uh, Crenshaw didn't have a, a squad. And I asked all the JV team, anyone want to dress? And he was the only one that took the offer, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. So that okay. just it's kind of where everything led from, you know. Okay. So it was, it was great for us. And now you're, you're expanding that leadership um, capacity that he has. Yeah, absolutely. And he's going to be a tremendous leader for us this year. And, and we have big hopes for him that he's going to continue on, not now, but also for his senior year and then move into college. He just has to do his part. Like most of our kids, we tell them, you do 50%, we do our 50%. Okay. And, you know, sky's the limit for you. So I have no doubt he's going to be able to go ahead and understand that down the road and get what he needs to get done and be okay. successful. Wonderful. And come back to Jonathan here. Um, you've got a f some of your very good players have separated. They're gone now. Yeah. And they won't be there when you look on the field again. But there's new players that are coming in. Talk about how you're interacting with the new players as uh, being the leader of the team. Well, you know, we lost some great players. Nick Delgadillo, Jesse Cortez, Martin, yeah. Angel Hidalgo. Well, it's nothing new, you know. I've been playing with some of these guys since I was like five. Mm. I've been playing with some of our receivers that are new. They're not new, but they were on the team last year and now they're starters. Okay. I've been playing with them since I was probably like five. I went to tournaments with them. So okay. it's nothing new, you know. I played with Ruva when we were younger. Mm -hmm. So it's a bond that we already had. Okay. And two quick questions here. Where did um, football really, really, you wanted to claim that as a sport of, of your choice? Uh, when did that happen? <laughs> Well, I started playing football when I was five, okay. and um, I played football and baseball. My dad stopped, stopped me from playing baseball about when I was 12. Okay. He told me he wanted me to focus on football, so that's where it took off. Okay. And uh, were you able to play in some of the Pop Warner teams? In, yeah, I played for Boyle area? Heights Wolfpack. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. And then now, let's flip over here uh, to your leadership because uh, what's so important is the classroom. Yes, sir. The other four-cornered room or we'll call it the, the study room where you have to <laughs> perform as well as you do on the field yes, sir. Um, how are things going at Garfield they're going good uh, at the beginning of the season I was struggling to be honest with you but mm -hmm. I happened to get that up from help from my friends in the classroom got my grades up so it's, I'm doing way better now okay all right uh, Jonathan Bautista boy we certainly uh, ha have a few more questions for you very very quickly here but um, uh, looking at the 19 schedule Wow. Yeah. Right off the bat, you're, you're, you're going to be playing some, some, some heavy hitters. Yeah, we got Montebello, Sarah, but, you know, um, they're just another team to us. We okay. just got to focus on one game at a time, and when it comes to a big game, we handle the business, you know? Okay, and then finishing off the non-league with, with Crenshaw at Crenshaw. Well, you know, last year we came out and against Crenshaw at Garfield. We handled our business. We're hoping to do that same at their home. Okay. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, now here we go. We're going to go into your uh, profile here and of course you're, you're only a, a junior yes sir okay and quarterback is your position uh, favorite class or subject in school uh science i just like like mixing chemicals and all that okay. stuff so you know i got all right uh and that could lead to bigger things where yes sir you, maybe physics and yep. chemistry and all those other good things okay uh, biggest highlight of your playing career uh probably going to the state championship for sure or probably my 50 yard touchdown to my best friend okay and um academic or athletic awards um, I got second team all city, um, and then got second team all league. Okay. And a quarterback of the year. Nice, nicely done. Educational and career goals. Um, my educational goals are to go to college, master. I'm not sure yet. You know, I'm barely going into my junior year. Okay. But I'm for sure looking into that. But if that doesn't work out, I want to go into the NFL. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't help, then I'll end up in the fire department. Oh, okay. Okay, very, very, very uh, uh, steady-minded there about looking at your options. Yes, sir. And we hopefully would like to see you in that middle one at the NFL. Yes, sir. Um, we don't have very many uh, Latino or Spanish surname uh, quarterbacks yes, sir. Uh, in the league, and we hope to see you there at some point in time. All right, um, persons who've had the uh, biggest impact? A uh, person that had the best, uh, damn. probably my parents, for sure. Never missed a game. Okay. I remember my mom would come out to my practices sick. Mm. So they've always been there for me. Okay. Um, favorite football teams, college or pro? Uh, Oakland Raiders and the Oregon Ducks. Okay. Um, favorite players? Favorite players got to be Baker Mayfield, the way he carries himself. Marcus Mariota. Okay. Again, quarterbacks. Yes, nice, sir. <laughs> nice. And favorite the movie or movies? Uh, Friday Night Lights, for okay. sure. All right. Uh, favorite type of music? Um, well, I listen to the different range. You know, I listen sure. to hip-hop, uh, oldies, Spanish music. Okay. So it, it ranges. 
And of course, your pregame, any pregame uh, particular for sure some YG. Okay, <laughs> all right, okay. And then uh, favorite music artist. Favorite music artist, damn. I don't know, probably YG, some. Okay, YG. Tupac. Okay. Biggie. All right. Depends. Okay. And Jonathan, uh, same offer to you to look into the fans out there that are going to be seeing this shortly and um, <laughs> they've not had a chance to, to see you and hear you and get a chance to know you a little bit. Uh, your, your message to them. Uh, I want to thank you guys for supporting us last season. I hope you guys come out and support us this season. And we're just going to handle business like we did last season and hopefully get back to the state championship. Okay. You heard it first right here from Jonathan Bautista, a.k.a. Boomer, to his teammates. And that will do it for his segment. We're going to come back after break, and we're going to bring in our next player uh, in just a moment. So don't go away. This is East L.A. Sports Scene. And continuing now with our third player from the Garfield Bulldogs, and what a season he had. And uh, we called many, many games uh, during the season with his name at the end of the play. And uh, we're looking forward to calling it again for our guest right now, Anthony Rubalcava from the Garfield Bulldogs. And it's number 55 on his jersey. You see right there plainly in sight. And uh, wow. He is ready to go. Anthony, good to see you. Good to see you, too. All right. Welcome to the program. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about 2018. And um, uh, I forgot on uh, Jonathan's um, segment. I'm going to do this right now before we get into talking about that. But state, in the state tournament, you were recipients for a ring. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, many people, especially in the public, haven't seen it. Can we ask you to? Oh, uh, actually, uh, Boomer is on that. Okay, can we can we bring that out? We're gonna we're gonna do that now because it's very important that um, you know I should have asked a question to to each of them, but I will to uh, them now uh, with the ring here, and we're gonna get a real tight shot, pretty much an exclusive shot here of the state ring. And let's see, was that was that good enough? We get another one more shot there, Anthony. Okay, so we see the ring, of course, and then with the plaque, and we have the helmet here that uh, uh, was used last year yes. by the team, and there's going to be a new one. But uh, Anthony, let's talk about uh, your role in last year's team because you played a significant part in the success of the Bulldogs all the way up to the state. Yeah, so, um, in your words, talk about that. My role, I guess, was I mean, it was big coming up. I mean, I had my sophomore year, I played varsity. Mm -hmm. So it was a learning experience for me. So then junior year, I was able to execute more and I already knew what I was doing. So everything was easier to come like by and game plans were just easier for me to understand. And, and so many times um, in high school, we know there's a head coach, but there's also position coaches. And I know Coach Hernandez has always stressed that his coaching staff is one of the finest that he's ever had. Oh, yeah, and like they continue to work with the players in their position to make them better. Yeah. Um, uh, we have like Coach Wiggs and Coach Blue always giving us advice on what to do better and if we're messing up like they help us like on that day we focus on just that move or just that like technique we're supposed to use. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's talk about the, uh, uh, the schedule from last year. Um, huge coming out of the gate. You never look back undefeated for I, I guess was it 10 games? 10 games. Yes. Yeah. Um, and the um, the idea is to even go even further than 10 this year, correct? Yes, we're just planning but to go undefeated the whole year. You lost a couple of very good friends off of the team yeah. last year. Um, your new teammates, have you had a chance to start working with them and get some chemistry going? Uh, yeah, I mean, I knew them for, like, years already, most of them. I played Pop Warner with them. Mm -hmm. And um, now, like, the new, new kids, I'm, like, really friendly. I'm easy to get along with, so I talk to everyone. I mean, I get along with everyone okay. on the team. Um, major, major moments or games from last year that you will you learned it was a learning lesson and you're going to take what you learned then and bring it into 2019 um i would say eagle rock probably one of the biggest games we had last year and um that game i really showed out like how much endurance i have mm -hmm. like not just through the first quarter and the second quarter but third and fourth i was able to come through for the team and help them get the w okay uh, conditioning again yeah okay uh for coach to talk a little bit about you coach um same thing for players of his stature, his height, his ability, his physical gift, and how he will make this year's team even better. 
Yeah, I think this Yoruba, without a doubt, is going to continue to show his leadership. Like you mentioned earlier, you know, as as a sophomore, we struggled with numbers. Uh, we had to pull these guys, him and a couple other guys from the JV squad, because we didn't have enough numbers. And he took it in stride. Some kids have shied away from that, but he took it in stride. And, and that's when we struggled defensively in 2017. Mm -hmm. We were able to put up points offensively, but boy, we really struggled defensively. And the way you see Ruba is, is what you get. He's a very mm -hmm. humble, very hardworking kid. Um, he's just going to tell you what he needs to tell you and that's going to be it but always carries himself with the utmost respect for himself his family mm -hmm. and everyone so we're really proud of not just having kids like him but just having a ton of them it's yes, awesome yes and, and coach um, when you do have your one-on-ones with the players um, generally describing your session with uh, Anthony pretty pretty mellow pretty good constructive all the time constructive amazing you know and he'll tell you on that eagle rock gate boy i jumped his butt you know <laughs> it was probably the third quarter because i know what, what he could do and i know what we needed from him at the time and you know sometimes you know they they just need a little nudge to to get going and i, I think he he understood what was expected from him and he finished the game for us like he mentioned earlier and it was just a tremendous atmosphere to be around but we got kids like this it makes our job so much easier mm -hmm. one other perspective coach you've had a lot of big linemen both on offensive line and defensive line looking back over the short past years how does Anthony um, come out in terms of some of the top players Oh, you know what? He's, he's It's kind of funny. He's wearing a number 55, and that was, you know, one of our guys, Moses Salcedo, that wore 42, but when he went to San Jose State, he wore 55, mm -hmm. and he's actually coaching now, and he's okay. the DN coach, so he's really helping Ruba a lot. I mean, Good. he's already doing a great job, Ruba is. Now you get someone like him to come back with some experience. Uh, it's truly amazing to have that kind of a culture where he understands this is a guy that played here and played that same yeah. position, so mm -hmm. the expectation is even higher this year for him. Okay. Come back to Anthony here. Um, the season has so many um, ups. I can't say too many downs because it was just on automatic pilot. But when coach wanted to rev it up, rev the engine up even higher, you guys responded. And so the classic happened. And then the second season with all the playoffs. Talk about how you made that transition from going from Eastern League into the playoffs. Um, I mean, of course, like the talent was like better than like we've seen all season and um, we just had to pretty much step up our game and know that we're not playing the same teams we were playing before and we never took any team lightly so we played our hardest every single game 100 percent okay and one of the uh, most uh, I, I want to say well attended and uh, most important game was the Kennedy when you, you defeated them from Delano uh, talk a little bit about the game prep for that and then that game itself well the game prep was more of that um, we've seen interviews on stuff that Kennedy were doing, not us, and like reports, and they were saying that Garfield really wasn't really much, oh. and they weren't okay. as big and as great as they made us seem. Okay. So that kind of fired up the defense, like to show them, like, okay, let's show them what we got, let's show them what we're really about. Okay. Uh, and then uh, we started with the Eagle Rock, and then of course um, Kennedy, and then move on to McClymans to the state. Talk about the buzz in the locker room, the chemistry, the excitement. Uh, teammates, classmates, it was really uh, in full force by the, by the time you got on that bus and made the trip. Yeah, like um, it was a really amazing experience for everyone to go up there like with our teammates and it was a really good bonding experience. Like spending a couple of days with each other like fully mm -hmm. and like eating together and everything. So it was a really great experience and we hope to be up there again. Because I know that was uh, again an NFHS game and uh, I believe one of the commentators said there, there were more Garfield uh, fans in attendance almost in the, than McClymans. I'm not sure about that, Coach, but uh, that's what one of the guys said. There was so much noise coming out of Garfield's side. Uh, that had a big um, uh, impact on you guys as well. Yeah, it had a big impact. I mean, it was a far game, so I feel like most of the players didn't expect many people to go, but mm -hmm. when we got to the stadium and there was just the stands were filled, we were like, we felt like it was a home game again. Mm -hmm. So like mm -hmm. we were able to get like hype from that. Coach, let me seize on, on that point there because, as you mentioned, the fundraising, the support of Garfield to do that. It was really uh, awesome that you had that, that many folks that went up. Yeah, you know what? It, I mean, we have true alumni fans that really care about these kids, and we had a lot of donations, uh, you know, go, come through our GoFundMe account because and at the end of the day, it's for these kids mm -hmm. and just to give them a memorable experience that they're never going to forget in their lives. And, right. and just to be able to step up like that, that was just truly amazing for our fans and our alumnus and really represented who we are as a community uh, to take care of these kids. And, you know, our administration did a great job of making sure all these kids had their room, had mm -hmm. their, their food, 
food on time. Yeah. I mean, just from top to bottom, you know, like an old saying from one of our old principals used to say, we got to, every time we do something, it has to be first cabin. And that's exactly yeah. what these donations did for our kids, give them that opportunity to experience a first cabin type of, of event deal. Wow. Lifetime experience that you'll, you'll never forget, a memory there. Uh, Anthony, let's go to your uh, prof personal profile here. Um, favorite class or subject? Uh, biology. Wow. That's very, very deep. Uh, that could lead to, uh, uh, who knows, a doctor degree or something we're talking about, uh, uh, I would say medical, possibly? Yeah, possibly. Okay. All right. Um, biggest highlight of your playing career so, so far? So far, it'll probably be going out to McClemens and just spending so much time with the team. Okay. Academic or athletic awards? Um, I mean, I've been an honor roll since freshman year. Ah. So it was like, my parents are proud of me for that. Okay. And then also, first team, all city. Nice. And um, led the city in sacks. N again, great accomplishment. But you mentioned that honor roll. Is that at a 3.5 or 3.0? How it did was they? A uh, 3.6 and a Oh, wow. Okay. So let that be known. Honor roll there for uh, Anthony Rubalcaba. Um, and let's see here. Uh, persons uh, who've had the biggest impact on your life? Uh, my parents. I mean, they've always supported me with my decisions and everything. I mean, I live in I lived in South Central, so mm -hmm. me telling them oh, I want to come to Garfield, they were like, "Okay, oh. why?" Okay. And it was just there was that bond with my teammates already that I had from Pop Warner. So mm -hmm. going into high school was like a really easy transition. Okay, and educational and career goals? Um, go to a four-year college with a full ride, hopefully, and get a major in marine biology, honestly. Oh, so okay. The biology would then go towards that. Okay, w wonderful. I'm glad, glad that you, uh, we brought that out of you because I was thinking biology <laughs> maybe for uh, going into the medical field for yeah. you know, like a doctor. Um, but you will be a doctor in, say, in marine biology. Yeah. All right. Um, favorite football teams, college or pro? Uh, for college, it would be the USC Trojans, and for pro, it would be Oakland Raiders. Ah, okay. And let's see, favorite players? Favorite players would be Khalil Mack and Ray Lewis. Ah, whoa. Uh, Hall of Famers? Which is, well, Ray Lewis Hall of Fame? Okay. And uh, Khalil Mack will be, I'm sure, yes. at some point. Uh, and favorite movie uh, or movies? Um, favorite movie, Blood In, Blood Out. Okay. Nice. Um, favorite music? Music. I mean, I can listen to anything, but if it's something like just to get me in the mood and just start vibing would be okay. hip hop. Okay. And your pregame playlist? Pregame playlist is honestly more like rap like Ice Cube, Tupac, okay. Okay. all that. All right, and lastly, favorite artists or actors? Favorite actors would be Dwayne Johnson and Terry Crews. Ah, the uh, action uh, yes. heroes, okay. All right, Anthony, uh, that's gonna wrap up our player profile, but the last question, of course, for you to give our viewers and your friends, viewers that are watching you, uh, a chance for you to give them a, a shout out or a message about 2019. Well, I would honestly want to give a shout out to Jesse Cortez. I mean, last year he really helped me out. I mean, in practice we would go to each other every day, like against each other. And currently I think that's what helped me grow and have an outstanding season. And just look forward to this year. It's going to be one of the best. All right. There you have Anthony Rubalcaba, 55 on his jersey. And hopefully you're going to be seeing a lot of him whenever we cover the Garfield Bulldogs on our East LA Sports Scenes High School Game of the Week. So uh, that will do it for his segment. We're going to take a quick break and bring in player number four in just a moment. This is East LA Sports Scene. And here we are now, player number four, as we continue down through our player five, but player four, Eric Anaya. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, sports fans, uh, you couldn't ask for a player with a bigger heart, a bigger um, sense of playing the game than, than, than this young man here because he gives it all on each and every play. And I want to personally greet you again, Eric Anaya. Thank you. Thank thanks you for coming me. back thank coming you for to, the, to the program. Uh, Eric, um, wow. Let's talk about 2018. I know we don't want to let it linger too much because you're preparing for the new season, but yes, yes. we have to really hear from you how it felt to be on the field playing in so many games and doing so well. Honestly, for my first year on varsity, it was a life-changing like, experience because like, I never played anything like that. But as Coach Turner has told me, like, we got to hop on the boat and we just got to go. Okay. And that's, that's what I did. I just learned from my coaches. I moved on. And... Joseph Serrano was a huge, huge help to me up there. Like he was, mm -hmm. he was a star already. He already knew what to do. Okay. He helped me along the way. So it was all good. But 
also it was, it was a great vibe like going out there with my teammates and everything mm -hmm. the crowd and all that it was sure. very good yes a lot of um, uh, moments to remember and yes. excitement for yes. the bulldogs last year um but uh, let's go even further back just a moment here because where did you start how did you say to yourself i want to play this sport and be good at it well i started back when i was playing baseball i saw lake um it was just signed behind me said huntington park football and one of my friends was saying telling me to join so i said all right I'll okay. Start, I'll try it. Okay. And first year went by when everything went good. I came back at it. Just started getting better, listening to my coaches, and sooner or later I ended up here at Garfield High School. Okay. Uh, now yeah. I'm being taught by Coach Hernandez right here. Yes. And, and along the way, um, might have been there another position or two you looked at and tried, but uh, you weren't happy, and then you settled on being in the line. And Pop Warner, I played running back, linebacker, D tackle. Um, but when it came up to high school, I just had to stay one position. I didn't want to start moving around and all that. So I just stayed with defensive line. Okay. So 2018 was the prepare, preparation for 2019. Yes. Uh, you did very well last year. And Coach Hernandez is very happy and glad to have you back. Um, but it's a new season. You lost uh, also some very good friends. Yes, yes. Talk about the what you're going to need to do to regroup and make new commitments. Well, now it's just we got to do what we got with our team. Just we got to move on. Like the players, like we said, some of the great friends, like Joseph Serrano, as I mentioned, like he was a help, huge help, but he left. And now we got to move on with what we got. Okay. And your coaches have been working hard with you here in the off season or in preparing uh, because the weight room, yes. as Coach Hernandez says, that is where the seasons are pretty much made yes. because of your conditioning later on in the season. Because you played three or four extra games. Yes, yeah. Weight room is a huge help to like what we do. We gotta push through the little hard moments like you rock, and those last seconds we had to push through. And the weight room, the weight room, that's what it helps us in. And the, the um, uh, I would say the mindset and the uh, the no quit attitude of the Bulldogs, wherever you were, at whatever moment it might have been, not looking good, but the Bulldogs rallied up uh, yes. through timeouts, through coaches' decisions, and out came a victory. Yes. Talk it, a little bit about during the playoffs because that was so important. The playoffs were a challenging experience. Like, well, we had to push through a lot. We're the underdog most of the time away, so we didn't have a home crowd advantage. But our fans were always there supporting, so that was a huge factor. But overall, like, we pushed through. We, we held our heads high through all the games. Even though we're down, we managed, we managed to make it through the second half. We passed, and look where we ended up. Well, let's talk real quick about um, the Kennedy game. That was huge. Yes, it was. And you guys made your statement to him very quick yes, we in did. the game. Talk about that game real quick. Um, that game was pretty dope. I, honestly, like, I just never thought I would make it that far in high school football. I didn't even think there was a thing like that. Um, it was pretty – I liked it. It was a pretty good experience. But we showed them. They're over mm -hmm. here talking. We yeah, showed them. Yeah. And then, of course, to the final, to McClyman's up north. Yes. Uh, uh, state final. That was actually, like, probably one of my best high school moments ever, or, like, or, like a life memory I'm going to have because I went out there with my teammates. We put, gave it all we got, and even though we lost, but it was a good experience. Okay. Um, give, give the microphone to, to Coach, and, and we'll hear how Eric will be contributing even more than last year. Yeah, absolutely. Well, he's going into his senior year, and like you mentioned, he's been with us, you know, since the ninth grade, and, you know, every year he's grown more and more. Uh, understanding the defense um, he's very quick off the ball a lot of people underestimate him because of mm -hmm. his size and that's the beautiful thing about yes. it that it, it happens <laughs> game in and game out yes. and, and yes. he continues to dominate yes he is unafraid as you might say coach uh, one of the type of players you need on that d line that can get in there and put the, the helmet on the helmet and do what he needs to do to bothers the quarterback and all the skills that he's taught with your coaching staff um, because the D-line uh, is very, very re uh, good recipients of the coaches that you have around them. Yeah, correct. Coach Eddie Velasquez does a great job with these guys and, and they understand their role and what, what their responsibilities are. And there's a lot there's a lot of things that goes into every single position, but we got tremendous coaches that just be, are able to assist our student athletes and it just makes life easy, like I mentioned earlier. Okay. And uh, again, um, Coach, the weight room. If you see Eric, I have no idea what he can press, what he can lift. But I think it would be an astounding number. 
yeah, you know what? I wouldn't, I wouldn't be either. <laughs> but you know, my coaches obviously do it. I'm sure he knows. But I think at the end of the day, he he has an, a tremendous speed, especially at his position, mm-hmm. uh, to get blocked. He knows how to make himself real skinny in between the gaps, and uh, that's just his trait. He has a low center of gravity, obviously, mm-hmm. and it's very difficult to block. Very okay. difficult. Okay, let's come back to Eric here. And I'm going to follow up on that weightlifting um, um, question because I asked Roosevelt, is there inter, how would you call it, line position or position um, challenges inside the weight room? Can the O-line outlift or do you guys have any competitions that, that push you guys forward? Uh, we got competitions on the field, but in the weight room, we're all just trying to push each other to become better. So um, sometimes we'll just be like yelling at each other like, oh, come on, get that up. Okay. But, that's all. We just support each other in there. So there's not one dominant uh, alpha male <laughs> in there lift, out lifting everybody. Uh, it's all pretty much the same. Um, Every, excuse much. me. Everybody does their work. Yeah, everyone gets their work in, gets their grind in. Okay. Here we go now. Uh, Eric and I, we're going to go to your player profile here. Right. Um, and, of course, you're a senior, defensive tackle, and uh, the academy uh, at school. Humanitas. Uh, Humanitas. Now, I wanted to ask, is that a, a new – academic curriculum at Garfield or because we've I've heard of uh, Torres having Humanitas and different or Renaissance different types of academies in the school H- has that happened at Garfield uh, it's kind of been there since I entered okay so, Coach, can you just elaborate on that just for a moment? Yeah, what we do is we have four academies within the school. Okay. Uh, they're all run and led by one assistant principal. Okay. Uh, so that's what ends up happening, and our principal kind of oversees everything, kind of serves as an umbrella. Okay. Uh, but on that note, it's funny you bring that up because uh, I just want to talk a little bit about our accolades in regards to our academies. Sure. We have 97% graduation rate. Oh, nice. Of those 97, uh, 90 are prepared. 90% of those students are prepared to go to a two-year, four-year college. So uh, I think okay. our staff – and our administrations do a tremendous job within okay. those SLCs to prepare our kids oh, nice. to move on. You know, okay. this year, I, be- I want to say we had some ridiculous numbers. I think it was 19 going to UCLA, mm-hmm. 11 going uh, to Cal, and two to uh, Dartmouth, one to Brown, and one to Harvard. So we're oh, really excited. Wow. Wow. So you Actually, bring up SLCs, I yeah, got to give you, you some numbers. Academic excellence right there. Okay. Um, biggest highlight of your playing career? Uh, I would be going to, like, over there playing McClemens at the state championship. Like I said, I never thought that would ever happen. It was just a very life-changing oh. moment. Dreams come true? Yes, it does. Okay. Uh, academic or athletic awards received? Uh, athletic awards, I have first team all league and rookie of the defensive player of the year. Ah, okay. Uh, persons who've had the biggest impact on your uh, life? I owe it all to my parents. They're the ones that put a roof on my head. They feed me everything. They give me clothes. And I give it up to Coach Jesse. He's been there since I was in Pop Warner. He's mm-hmm. helped me every step of the way, and he's still there with me today. Okay. Uh, and those are four life individuals that you'll always give thanks to and yes, haven't always. had them in your life. Okay, you're very huge. Educational and career goals? Uh, education, I want to study in marine biology. I'm like really interested in like the sea life and all that. Oh. And I want to become a marine biologist. That's oh, my career goal. okay. All right, so you and your teammate. Yep, me well, and Ruba. Yeah, I'm Ruba Cava. Okay. Um, football teams, college or pro? Uh, my favorite football team is the Green Bay Packers and my college team is Oregon Ducks. Ah, okay. Um, you know, Coach, I haven't heard too much about SC and UCLA. <laughs> Most of our players, are, there was an article that said they're going to different schools, mm-hmm. that USC and UCLA don't have the automatic magnet, so to speak. Okay. Um, now, uh, favorite players? Uh, it would be Aaron Donald and Jair Alexander. I just like the way they're explosive and everything, how aggressive they play. Okay. Now, I'm f- familiar with Aaron Donald for the Rams, but um, yes. Mr. Alexander he escapes me. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, he's team. a rookie. He plays the corner for the Green Bay Packers. Ah. And he came out of Louisville, but he's very aggressive, like how he plays and everything. I like how he is. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, favorite uh, movie or movies? Uh, Forrest Gump. I ah. like Forrest Gump. It's a, okay. just the way he tells the story and everything. Yes. I like how it is. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the all-time movies, of course. Uh, favorite music? Uh, it would be hip-hop and oldies. And your pregame uh, playlist? Uh, like some Gunna, Young Thug, I listen to some Biggie, some Tupac in there. Okay. And your favorite artists or, or, or actors? Probably be Gunna. Actors? I don't know. It's just I like the action movies. Okay. Um, okay. Well, there's so many out there, and they keep coming. Yep. You know, Fast and Furious and movies like that, right? Yeah. Okay. Eric and I, it's been a pleasure talking to you, but now we – give you that opportunity All look right. out to the viewers they're there you just can't see them right now they're gonna be thankful for you coming in and giving a little bit of your time to for them to know you all right. thank you fans for all the support last year we're bringing it back this year and we want to before you sign off here 
let Eric get a shot of your ring, okay, up close and personal. And, and Coach, give the microphone to Coach for a second. Coach, in terms of, of, of the ring itself, is there anything that, that you can verbally describe that's on the oh, ring? Oh, yeah, here? absolutely. It's yeah. a state regional championship for uh, a division. Uh, it's it's history makers because we really believe that's what they made. They made history. Okay. Uh, and pretty much their, their slogan was doubt it. Yes, because everyone that we would go up and and start doing our warm ups, they would say something, and our kids would okay. just say, "Doubt it," you know, Doubt like, "Yeah, okay. right," okay. you know. So it's it's good. We try to put everything we could on there, including okay. the record of uh, thirteen and two. Wow, fantastic! Okay, that will do it. We've heard from Eric, and uh, we're going to now take a break. Bring in our final player here in just a moment. This is East LA Sports Scenes High School Preview, twenty nineteen football. Okay, and here's our final player segment, and we're going to be speaking with the specialist on the team. He's a place kicker. Sometimes he'll kick off as well. But it's Fabian Munoz Rodriguez. And Fabian, we want to welcome you to the program. Oh, thank you very much. Okay. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. You're so welcome. Um, and we want to just, uh, again, have this opportunity for our fans and our viewers to meet you up close and personal yeah. and get to know you just a little bit better. So when we come with our games of the week this season, they're going to, oh, yeah, I remember the, you know how that goes. Yeah. It really Good helps. Day the program, us, and of course the viewers to really understand what's going on. But uh, Fabian, let's talk a little bit about uh, your role on the team. You are uh, an exceptional kicker. Thank you, thank no you doubt much. about that. You're going places. People that know the game know your asset. Um, but talk about how Coach uh, Hernandez uh, put you into the scheme and built your confidence week yeah. to week to week. Well, um, as a kicker, um, you're kind of guy. You're kind of the last guy to make the PAT. Mm -hmm. So it's like the clinch hitter. Like it's the end of the note. It's finish it. So you gotta yes. finish strong. Make the PAT. Finish strong. Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So what coach? Um, he's like, get your head in the game. Relax. Get your game on. Just like that. And then um, my 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 own coach Rico. Mm -hmm. He also tells me it's, it's psychological. You just it's all in your head. Once you got in your head. Mm -hmm. But being a place kicker is a multi-dimensional um, position to play. You mm -hmm. kick off, PATs, and then punts, and, and, punts and, and, and then field much, goals. Yeah, not much time, too. So, so uh, and we know that in your um, coaching playbook for the kickers, mm -hmm. Coach Hernandez has some exceptional, uh, as they say, um, doozies, <laughs> <laughs> unexpected that yeah. you can do. And to do those might mean critical possession, oh, maybe yeah, course, onside certainly. kick. Uh, but you're there. You know how to do those things. So um, your uh, ability to adjust and to adapt in certain games, that does not get seen a, a lot by the viewers, but you are trained to do it and you're, and, and, and you're coached to do it. Oh, yes, yeah, certainly. Okay. Um, let's talk about a typical practice day for you because we know what the runners do. Everybody <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in most formations, they're, they're, you, you're the player without that much of a formation mm -hmm. for yourself. But talk about how you have to get prepared every day for practice. Um, practice every day. I go to the weight room, hour sesh, and then we go change, put on our cleats, get ready. Um, 30, 20 minutes of special teams, just like that. Just get the run done of everything. And then I go to my own little space, a little bit past the field, right there. And then it's just me, my coach, um, JV kickers. Mm -hmm. And what we do, we practice. We have our own like um, kicking spot, but mm -hmm. we practice right there. So once we get on the field, it'll be easier and stuff like that. We do a couple sets of those. Um, we go on to like practicing, how do you call it? Just practice, kick it straight, mm -hmm. um, a little bit of punts after in the end, yes. and then just like that. Okay, and, and I do know that there was a shared responsibility last year at certain times. You, mm -hmm. I think, were, had to go away for a couple of games or miss oh, a game or two, but yeah. that meant Coach Hernandez had to yeah, special to teams, uh, backups. Yeah. Talk about how important that is. Um, well, when I left, it was the Crenshaw game, right? I had left, um, and we had this other kicker who was um he's good too mm -hmm. um his name was eddie yes he was a great guy was mm -hmm. it um he wasn't able to be on the team but um when i left they he was very he was very essential since i was gone now so mm -hmm. they had to contact him he came in and then after that he stayed and he became just as important as me oh very much yes absolutely yeah. uh coach let's um talk about now the asset that he brings that uh, fabian because very important you've elevated the place kicking to a whole new level. Uh, we haven't seen 
you uh, a lot of schools use their plate scraper like you do. Yeah, it's it's a rare it's a rare animal, to say mm -hmm. the least. Uh, very difficult to find kids that are willing to play multi sports and more so, you know, just understand their role as a kicker, a punter. Mm -hmm. So we're very fortunate to have Fabian, and we're even more fortunate as well to have a coach that's just dedicated, you know, to him. He's a Garfield alumnus. He's been there, you know, throughout the whole time that I've been there, and he just does a tremendous job of not only physically working with the kids, but I also psychologically they they're also even helped to sponsor Fabian to go to Chris Saylor camps where he oh, got rated yeah. as a four star okay. kicker. Okay. okay. So he's okay. he's really done some tremendous things for our kids, and those are the kind of people that you love to have at your school site and within your program that care about these kids other than just football, but offering their services to help them grow and, and get better. Okay. I'll come back to Fabian because, again, as you mentioned, the uh, the other four-room, uh, um, four, how would you call it, four-walled uh, uh, piece of the puzzle, so to speak, is in the classroom. Oh, yeah. Because you have the field and four corners and a rectangle, mm -hmm. and inside the classroom, lots of things happen in there. Oh, yeah, how, yeah. how are things going for you there? Um, I'm in the honor classes. It's, it's great. Um, I, I try to stay interactive with all the teachers. You know, um, be very friendly with uh, people, like have a good environment. And the work, sometimes it'll get hard, you know, when it just piles up. But uh, I'll just come home for practice, just get my mind straight, do what I got to do, finish my homework, go home. Okay. Let's talk about that, uh, the camp. Yeah, the camp. Chris Taylor camp. Big, big. Yeah, so very talk big camp. Chris Taylor camp. Um, it was um, March 26, I believe. Um, was I had to wake up really early, man. I was... Um, I was I was I was really nervous because um, this was the first uh, camp I've ever been to in my life. Mm. You know, this was gonna be a bunch of other kickers. I was actually gonna see like to what extent of how good how good I was as a kicker. Mm -hmm. So I went early in the morning, couple uh, like about about an hour hour and a half away. Um, I go there morning, check in. They give me a shirt, and then I just look around, see around, just see, and I notice that the guys they're like all say all um, all heights. Like there's mm -hmm. guys as little as our own uh, yeah. Eric. Yes, and then there's Six four, or six five. Yeah, even. Yeah. Yeah, and then there's another guy. Wow. Like bigger than Ruva, mm. just like that. Wow. And it's crazy. And then so we go and do the introductions, and then we're kicking, and I see that I'm actually doing really good. You know, um, the um, Chris Ellis, he's noticing my kicks, and then we go to this one place, do some evaluations, and then he tells me what I need to know. Um, most of it, um, I knew a lot because of my coach, uh, yeah. Rico, mm -hmm. is very helpful. But I learned some new stuff too. We ah. both learned. And then we went do some evaluations, and end of the day it was a great day. I enjoyed my time. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully, I made my coaches proud. I'm pretty sure I did. Okay. And um, just That's overall, good. A good day. Okay. One more question for coach, and I'm going to come back for your player profile. But coach, to have a player like Fabian in your arsenal, uh, knowing that at any given time in a game, uh, he can deliver something that will catch the opponent totally off guard depending on what the type of play it is. Yeah, you know, uh, that's one of the things about Fabian. He's a very cerebral football player, and he understands the expectation at, at that moment. Uh, but, you know, one of the things that he has is that unbelievable leg. It's, it's like we talk about and our defensive coordinator says, man, let's just put him on the 20. Make life easy for me, please. You know, and, <laughs> and so for the most part, he's done a great job. Also punting the ball, he does great with that. He's, he has certain directional kicks that he has to, you know, entertain based on what we see on the opponent's part. But uh, he, you heard it very rare when you hear a kicker say he's in the weight room. So mm -hmm. everyone's required to be in our weight room, even our kickers. Oh. And, and of course, yes, yeah, I uh, totally agree with that because the strength is coming from the leg and, and the foot. Yeah. And the coordination up here to do that has to be all in sync. Yes, sir. Yes, as, as we all know. But uh, we see nothing but uh, sky's the limit for you uh, from what we've been able to see uh, as you as a Garfield Bulldog uh, player. I so, mean, maybe uh, we're going to go into your um, – Player profile, yes. okay. Uh, we have you here as a senior, yes, sir. Kicker and punter, mm -hmm. okay. And um, the academy, it's cool. um, career and performing arts, okay. also known as Kappa. Okay, yeah. wonderful. And you're allowed to pursue your own uh, degree or, yeah, uh, high yeah. school, yeah, for certificate under that, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, favorite class or subject? It's English, and it's more about what we do in the class than the subject English, because my teacher is a really great teacher. Kind of makes it more interesting, fun, mm -hmm. and uh, really engaging. Nice. Okay. And biggest highlight of your playing career? Uh, my biggest highlight was um, against Eagle Rock because um, okay. making that that PAT uh, mm -hmm. in the beginning of the game uh, mm -hmm. it was really important because that's in the end that's how we won, 24-21. The whole team pushing, grinding. Yeah. I just tried to do my part as best as I could, and we came out on top. As they say, it's a team effort yes, all the is. way. Okay. Uh, academic or athletic awards received? 
Uh, I got the All-City Kicker. Another award was the four-star for Chris Sailors. Okay. Um, pretty good. Um, I think I got the GPA one. Pretty good attendance. Okay. Wonderful. Persons who have had the biggest impact on your life? Oh, uh, my parents. My, my dad, he's like a good role model for me. Mm -hmm. um, played back in the day. Uh, soccer, actually. Ah, so that's okay. mine. Okay. And then my mom. My mom's my, my biggest supporter, you know. Um, always um, providing me what I need, like with food. Everyone, like a lot of people on the team know that food's very important for me. Okay. And, um, and the last one would be my coach, Rico. Okay. He's, um, he's the one that really believes in me, has faith that I can go far. Okay. Educational and career goals? Um, finish high school, of course. Uh, go to college, necessary. Uh, two, year, two to four years. And in the end, uh, try to become like a firefighter. Ah, yes. okay. Okay. Um, hope I'm not, not missing too much between college and possibly an NFL career. Oh, yeah. Well, there's, Should that I'll, align itself in your... Yeah. Was it, there's always hope. I'm, I'm hoping for college ball. Okay. And if NFL, even better. Yes. Okay, well, uh, a lot may be hinging on this season here. Yeah, uh, they probably have, probably have you uh, as being looked at now in terms of a prospect, and they're going to probably wait to your senior year to come so back and, for, and give you a scholarship. Yeah. Okay, um, let's go to your favorite um, football teams, college or pro? Um, uh, pro, I have to go for the Rams. They're home. So, okay. You know, All right. Something like that. Okay, and let's see. I uh, see football. Yeah, but soccer uh, would be. But, uh, yeah, for the football, like it would be uh, Chivas Guadalajara. It's a uh, it's a national team for us back in Mexico. Okay. Uh, okay. It's been a tradition. And I see you you crossed over into the yeah. soccer. It's, it's okay with me. Uh, 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 favorite uh, player in soccer? Um, it would be uh, Lionel Messi. He's uh, one of the best rag to riches story. Um, just putting out that hard work to good use. Okay. And, and does he have an autobiography on him? Uh, it's out. People can read about Messi. Um, they probably have a biopic. Okay. Yeah. All right. And um, let's see here. Favorite movie or movies? Uh, my favorite movies would be Avengers Endgame. Ugh, crazy ending. Wow. Okay. And um, another one would be Rat Race. It's a family favorite. Okay. All right. Uh, favorite music? Uh, hip hop, um, R and B, lo fi. Okay. A lot of and your pregame playlist? Pregame, I'll put a little bit of um, R and B, hip hop, some Drake, some Twenty One Savage, stuff like that. Okay. Great. And uh, favorite artists or actors? Um, my favorite artist is uh, XXX Tentacion. He's an RB, okay. uh, now deceased. Okay. Uh, rip. Um, okay. And uh, my favorite actor would be Chris Evans for his role in Captain America. Ah, yes. okay. Wow, we've had a lot of uh, diversity here, Coach, uh, with the players and uh, their favorites sections. Good to learn, good to know that. Uh, and, and now, uh, Fabian, we uh, go ahead and give you that opportunity to look into. The, the fans that are going to be watching you when we get this up on our website. Uh, I like to say uh, hi to the fans, um, hi to my parents, my family, um, my coach Rico Blue, her name is here. Um, all my other coaches, um, was it the players that came with me? And um, let's see who else. Oh, my best friend Gonzo. Okay. Yeah. All right. Watch number sixteen, Garfield Bulldogs in 2019. It's coming up very shortly. We'll be right back. Okay, here we are now, ready to wrap up our program. But before we let Coach Hernandez go, we're going to get into his personal profile. But we want to make sure that all eyes are set for 2019 because it's going to be a very different year. Coach, we've just seen the, the new divisioning. And we'd like your perspective for our viewers to kind of understand how each year, I know John Aguirre has left now, but the coaches have a lot to do in terms of meetings for the divisioning. Can you kind of explain how that works? Yeah, well, you know, football in itself in the city section has an advisory and uh, their job is to kind of get a, a, a formula and the formula that's in place now is that they review for the last two years and okay. based on wins and losses and then you're projected of where you're going to end up at. I believe we're going to probably be going to a 50-50 model per year as opposed to a 60-40 that's in okay. play now. Uh, but for the most part, that's the way it's broken down and kind of the easiest way to look at it is any time that you're successful, then more than likely if you make a championship at any level, mm -hmm. you're probably going to be bumped up by one division. Okay. So that's usually the way it works out. Okay. And that's easy to understand in terms of the strength of programs. But what if, uh, say, we notice now the Roosevelt has gone to Division One this year. Uh, should they have problems and not do well, is it a step back down? Is that part of the uh, plans that the coaches have, or do they have to remain for two to three years at Division One? Yeah, if, if we go with the model with the 60-40, I, I see that they probably, if they end up at that bottom tier, which you never know, mm -hmm. um, I think it's uh, our section has really changed. You know, the name brand has changed. You know, some of the name brands you used to hear back in the day, like the Fremonts and the Crenshaws mm -hmm. and the Dorseys, mm -hmm. they're not those same teams really anymore because right. of how our schools have just, you know, been taken over by a couple other schools and it just watered everything down. Mm -hmm. uh, not saying they're not good 
teams or good schools, but just a mere fact that we got a bunch of other schools that have popped up and kind of diluted everything. But uh, mm-hmm. they they definitely can compete at the Division One level and even yeah. the Open level. So uh, you never know. Yeah. But if they remain down there at 23, 22, somewhere in there, they more than likely okay. will probably get bumped down. And those teams from that Division Two that get to a section championship will probably take their place. Okay. And then uh, two other things, Coach. Um, the um, state divisioning too. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe you mentioned that um, it bodes well for Garfield in the way that they're doing it now. Can you amplify on that a little bit? Yeah, well, at the state level, it, it was kind of unfortunate. They did, they did change that a bit, and uh, we believe that it was a particular section of which is nearby mm-hmm. uh, that uh, went to the state and did not like uh, the uh, open runner-up in our division to go to the state. Oh. Uh, they felt that, um, I guess, we were making people look bad. Not we but myself, you know, including all our coaching staff and everybody else, but the reality was was that Crenshaw had gone the previous year mm-hmm. to a regional, won it, and when, ended up going to state and won it as well. Yes. And then we did similar except lost at the state championship. So they felt that the only uh, teams that they wanted to be in any type of regional mm-hmm. or state game would be those that were champions. Champions ah. of, of the Division Three, Division Two, II, Division One, and Open. They no longer will take the runner up. So kind of hurts us because I believe we're a team that's right in the middle. Oh, okay. We're not we're not really up there with the Narbons of the world that have some phenomenal athletes and, you know, being down at the D1 really doesn't help us, so we're kind of like right in between mm, here. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. there's nothing we could do about it. All okay. we can do is play the game and honor and, and basically go with, with what the, the section wanted and the state wanted, and that's pretty much what it was. So we're, we're, okay. we we got to win a, a championship in order to get to any type of regional game. And that will be for this coming year then, for Cor- 20, 2019? Correct, and okay. that's for the okay. upcoming year. Okay, and lastly, we saw that in the Division One, uh, with an asterisk at the bottom, I believe, from what I remember, the first eight, t- eight teams will then advance up to the Open Division? Correct. The first eight teams, top eight teams that end up at the end of the season, those will go up to the Open. Uh, and again, the runner-up will no longer go okay. to, to any type of regional game. It will only be champs, and including just the Open champs. I see. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to keep our eye on that because the CIF State and the local city section, um, they have their hands full every year when it comes to playoffs, as we've seen. And uh, hopefully um, the cards will fall in the right direction for our local teams. We certainly want to follow them as far as they can go. Yeah, in absolutely. The playoffs. Absolutely. Okay, Coach, we're going to go to your profile here for <laughs> viewers to, to kind of get to know you a little sure, bit. Sure, absolutely. They've seen you a lot uh, on the sidelines and interviews post game, but this is the first chance for you to come into our studio, kind of relax and talk talk with us here on East LA Sports Scene. We thank you for that as well. No, thank you for oh, having us. You're welcome. Coach, this is on your personal uh, early phases of, of your life. Where, where did. That all take place, birthplace and growing up. Well, you know, it's uh, kind of ironic. I was born in uh, at Garfield Hospital in Monterey Park. Okay. Uh, so, you know, being at Garfield makes me feel a little at home and nearby Monterey Park as well, just up Atlantic. Uh, but I grew up there. Um, then um, also we moved into Huntington Park. Okay. Uh, so I, I went to Huntington Park High School and I played football there. And I was very familiar with uh, the rivalries with uh, mm-hmm. with Roosevelt and uh, Garfield and uh, played against both of them and in some exceptional games, both mm-hmm. those teams back in the 90s. 91, yeah. 92 with the uh, Ebony Wilson at uh, at uh, at Roosevelt, and mm-hmm. uh, definitely uh, uh, we had some guys out there at uh, at Garfield that are phenomenal as well. Mm. We got some good friends. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then let's see uh, in, any sports that well you mentioned football. Anything else that might have. Um yeah, I, I was on the football team and also track and field. Track and field. Track and okay. field, yeah, I did that. I did the pole vault, did the 4x4. Four four, so oh, okay. Good. Yeah. Very agile. Yeah, okay. we try to be. Can't say the same anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, higher education and degrees. Uh, you know what? I was very fortunate and blessed uh, to go to San Diego State University uh, and kind of did a, a little bit of work under there as an equipment manager, ran around just mm-hmm. uh, Coach Ted Toner and a couple of other okay. exceptional coaches yes. that uh, moved on to better places and uh, some retired out. After that, I went to National University also in San Diego, and I was able to attain a uh, master's degree in special ah. education and then ended up with an administrative credential at uh, USC. Ah, very good. Well-rounded there. Okay, professional career. Um, other occupations? Uh, you know, pretty much I, I, I teach and coach, and that keeps me busy enough. Ooh. So it's, okay. it's, it's, it's a blessing. So you're a career-long um, life in, in, in education, teaching? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, major achievements or awards? 
uh, you know, I don't like tooting my own horn because it's all the accolades that the coaches and the kids make me look good. But I, again, I got to give it up to the coaches, uh, uh, coach of the year, state coach of the year uh, for two different years. Mm -hmm. uh, same as well as for coach of the year in our section, mm -hmm. two different years. Uh, but that's pretty much okay. Yeah. Well, well deserved when you put in the hours and the time and just the extra, as they say, extra miles you've done with all your players in the community. It, it comes back to really rise to the occasion that you yeah, you deserve that. You put your time in. Well, thank you. Thank yeah, you. Like absolutely. I said, uh, it's all the coaches and the kids that make me look good. And, and you know, like I said, I'm just a figurehead out there. Okay. Um, persons who've had the biggest impact on you. Uh, definitely my my father you know rest in peace he's uh one thing that he always mentioned is if you're going to do something do it right if not okay. don't do it on you hear that cliche all the time yeah. but at the end of the day you really take that to heart and uh we're always studying we're always working we always want to to see what the new update technology mm -hmm. is and all that and just adapt to where we're at in, in our society so uh thankfully for him you know i was able to understand that okay. and uh, be somewhat successful in my life Okay, he's a very important man in your life, your dad. Very, very, very good, good words that you're putting there for him and describing him like that. It's, it always is it's sentimental to, to hear an adult talk still about his dad and how important he was. And yeah. I know mom's in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, mom. Mom's a great backbone of our family as well, very supportive. And it's like I tell kids, you know, it's like I told a lot of the kids when they asked me, well, how you feel about your dad passing? I said, well, you know what? One of the important things to understand is you're only going to get one set each yep. if you're lucky. Yeah. You know, and once they're gone, they're gone. You yeah. can't go buy one, rent one, find one on social media. No. It doesn't exist. So okay. just, like, keep things in perspective. Well said, Coach. Now, uh, on your favorite side, when you're – not so much tied up with football <laughs> and more football. You do have a life with family, of course, and there has to be that time where you can kick back and relax. So I, I put this in just to give folks an idea what you do in the, in the, in the favorite times. Mm -hmm. And um, let's go over the categories, Coach. Uh, favorite teams. You know, favorite teams, I just love watching great games. You know, I, I don't have a favorite team per se. I don't, I don't follow teams with my heart. Okay. If, if I did, it would be San Diego State and USC. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if, if there's an amazing SEC game, I'm there. I okay. want to watch it. I want to learn. I want to record it. I want to. Mm -hmm. I just want to be able to, to learn from that. And yeah. uh, I, I really per se don't have one. I love watching college okay. football is my favorite. NFL is my second. And okay. if I watch any, any NFL, it's late in the playoffs when it really counts and it matters to those guys. <laughs> yes, and all the way up to the uh, to the Super Bowl. Exactly. But but a quick question, just kind of off this favorite here for a moment. But the XFL is coming. Uh, I'm not sure if you heard about that. The new pro team. Yeah, I, be I believe there was one league that got started and then it collapsed yeah. within a few weeks. That but was I, the Alliance. You know, but this one, they say, is the real deal for XFL. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. I, I'd love to to see that and maybe have something here in LA that we can. Uh, go out and visit yeah well we're gonna have a team um, we'll see we'll keep everybody posted on that but uh, continuing on with your um, uh, favorites and any players coach that uh, stand out to you you know what I just like watching players that are great role models you know yeah. not not only for the kids but also for myself so I mean I, I like I said I really don't have any exceptional guys that jump out there but I, I just I'm a fan of anyone okay. that's for kids and, and, and does the right thing you know, to, to lead our kids in the right direction and be a perfect mm -hmm. role model for our yes. guys. It shows humanitarian uh, attitudes, right? Exactly. Okay. All right. Uh, favorite the movies? You know what, Rudy? I'm still, oh. I still get emotional. I can oh, watch boy. that ten times and I still get emotional. <laughs> I'm a very emotional person. Okay. I, you can't even take me to Toy Story. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> What's that? Very emotional, yeah. Okay. Um, any favorite music, book, uh, authors, books or authors? You know, I, I love... Uh, I love listening to different variety of music uh, uh, author dover uh, i believe is called resilience uh, mm -hmm. that's an amazing amazing author on uh, just passion of sport uh, but again uh, music i love listening to pepe aguilar ah. antonio aguilar mm -hmm. ramon ayala wow. uh, i can listen to oldies disco stevie okay. b you know, all that good <laughs> stuff okay well that's good that means you're enjoying it we see a smile on your face yeah absolutely you get to enjoy things and then let's see uh, uh mentioning of uh family members oh uh, i mean my wife's beautiful wife uh, martha she uh, really really holds the house down you know uh, beautiful daughter Anna just a true blessing uh, as well as my son Noah mm. so you know my wife attended Garfield so then my daughter and I'm sure my son is on his oh, way as well okay. so I'm just I'm just very happy and uh, excited to be able to to be at a place that means so much to them mm -hmm. and to the alumni but uh, more so to those two important people and my son okay. uh, being the third key piece in there in my family okay coach well said well done we give you that opportunity 
to greet our fans and give them uh, your projections for next year? Well, you know, I just want to say thank you to the fans that supported us last year. Hopefully you can come out and support us again this year. I, I think we have an unbelievable group of kids that works their tail off day in and day out, and not to count on our staff. I wish I could name them all, but I, we'd probably be here all night. We have an enormous uh, staff and guys that truly put in the work and very diligent workers from our film crews uh, to our breakdown team uh, to our back shot to our entire coaching staff and our weight room coaches that are there day in and day out, thank you. But again, come watch these group of guys. It's going to be an exceptional year. Uh, I know we're, we're excited about it. And uh, come on over. Come on over and uh, see what uh, Bulldog football is all about if you have never attended a game. There it is. And we want to thank you, Head Coach Lorenzo Hernandez. After all these years, we finally got the in-studio interview. And appreciate you supporting our rollout here of the preview. For 2019. Absolutely. I think it's a great it's a great thing for our kids and a great thing for our community. And thank you so much for your continue to do this. And uh, hopefully we'll, we'll keep on doing this for years to come. Absolutely. We agree with that. And Blueprint for Success, Head Coach Lorenzo Hernandez. And with that, it's about time we give you our sign off here um, because we're very health minded. So uh, my saying, of course, if you're healthy, you will be wealthy. OK, and get into one of the team sports or the individual sports, whether you're a power runner, a walker, or Tai Chi, anything that moves your body into full exercise mode so you can stay healthy. Because at the end, you will have your time to spend your money and you gotta be wealthy, okay, Absolutely. but by doing that. So uh, that will do it for this edition of East LA Sports Scene. We wanna thank our director of photography, also in video and regular digital photography, Eric Sarney and producing tonight's program. And yours truly, Rico Cabrera, the executive director uh, for East LA Sports Team. We thank head coach Lorenzo Hernandez and his crew that he brought in those five outstanding young players from Garfield High School. So get your calendar out. August 23rd, the first game against Montebello, and it will be at Montebello on the road. The Bulldogs will not be at home until, my goodness, September the 27th. And that will be against Bell High School in the first Eastern League uh, matchup. So uh, we're going to be signing off now. Thanks for watching. Remember to take care, be careful, uh, be safe. But more importantly, be back with us here on East LA Sports Scene. And we remind you, on our YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe. It will be down on the lower left. Look for the red uh, marker. And, of course, click subscription or subscribe. Thanks for watching. And until we're together again, take care, and we'll see you then.